Daddy says, I'm a special little guy. I am a princess. And I am a prince. Mom says, I'm an angel sent down from the sky. My Daddy says, I'm a special little soldier. No one is as handsome, strong as me. It's true, he can gold in my pen and to fold. But I'm a little soldier, hot to fall free. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. 155 brand new luxury cars, sir. Ah! Harry! Hang on. Look at this. She's reading a book. That's not normal for a five-year-old. I think she might be an idiot. Listen to this. It was the la, best la, of la, times, la, it was la, the worst la, of times. Stop scaring your mother with that book, boy! And I'm she... a girl. And she keeps trying to tell me stories, Harry. It's not normal for a girl to be all thinking. I'm gonna call you straight back. I'm trying to pull off the biggest business deal of my life, and I have to listen to this. What about me? I've got a whole house to look after. Dinners don't microwave themselves, you know. I'm off to bleach my roots, and I shan't be talking to you for the rest of the evening. But I'm going to make us rich. How rich? Very rich. Russian businessmen, very, very stupid. Your genius husband is going to sell them 155 old bangers as 155 luxury cars. But that's not fair. The cars will break down. What about the Russian? Fair. Listen to the boy. I'm a girl. Fred doesn't get you anywhere in life. You think at a twit brain. Thank God Michael has inherited his old man's brains. Hey, eh, son? Michael. Well, I shall take the money when you earn it, and I shall spend it. But I shan't enjoy it because of the despicable way which you have spoken to me tonight. This is all your fault with your stupid reading and your stupid books. But that's not right. You're off to school in a couple days, and I know your headmistress, Agatha Trunchbull. Scary woman she is. Used to compete in the Olympics, throwing hammer. Imagine what she's gonna do to a goblin like you, boy. I'm a girl. Now head out to bed, you little bookworm.
son, a man's hair is his greatest asset. Good hair means good brain. Ah! Your hair, it's, it's green. My hair's green? Why on earth did you do that? Maybe you used some of mommy's peroxide by mistake. That's exactly what you've done, stupid man. My hair, my lovely hair! I got a deal today. The Russians, what am I gonna do? I know what you can do. What? You can pretend to be an elf. What are you talking about, you fool? <laughs> this boy's alone. Mom, would you like to hear a story? Don't be dis. The sooner you're locked up in school, the better. Matilda, what a pleasure to see you here in the library again. Yes, I mean, my mom wanted me to stay home, but I think it's good for grown-ups to have their own space. Your parents must be proud to have a girl as clever as you. And do you tell them stories like you tell me? Oh, I love your stories, Matilda. That's a hint, by the way. Once upon a time, the two greatest circus performers in the world, an escapologist and an acrobat, fell in love and got married. They performed some of the most incredible feats together, and people would come from miles around. Kings, queens, celebrities, and astronauts. And not just to see their skill, but also the love for each other, which was so deep that it was said cats would purr as they passed them, and dogs would weep with joy. They moved into a beautiful old house. And although they loved each other, they were sad. We have everything, but the one thing, we do not have a child. Their sadness overwhelmed them, and the work became the only place they could escape the tragedy of their lives. So they decided to perform the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It was called the burning woman hurtling through the air with dynamite in her hair over sharks and spiky objects caught by the man locked in the cage. And it was the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It was our destiny. Well, what happened? I don't know. Bye, Mrs. Phelps. I'll see you tomorrow. After your first day of school.
said. Good morning, children. My name is Miss Honey, and today is a very special day. Your first day at school. Now, can anyone read this? Me, me, me. I can. Please pick me, pick me, pick me. Very please, well, please. Nigel. Uh, it's a uh, um. <clears throat> um, yes, I think we'd um, better leave it there, Nigel. We don't want you to burst a blood vessel on your first day. Um, oh, lavender? Is the first bird tomato? <laughs> uh, no. But tomato is a very good word. Yes! Uh, Matilda? I can now read words. So, Matilda, you can read words? Well, I needed to learn to read words because basically a sentence is just a bunch of words and if you can't read a sentence, you've got no chance with books. And have you read a whole book yourself? More than one. I love books. Last week, I read quite a few. A few? What books did you read? Nicholas Nickleby, Oliver Twist, Jane Eyre, The Lord of the Rings, Crime and Punishment, and... Oh, The Cat in the Hat. D don't be pathetic, just go in. Well, don't just stand there like a wet tissue. Get on with it. But, m Miss Trunchbull, there's in 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 my class. There's 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 a little girl called Matilda Wormwood. Ah, daughter of Harry Wormwood, who owns Wormwood Motors. Excellent man. Told me to watch out for the brat. Although say she's a real wolf. Oh no, headmistress. I don't think Matilda's that kind of child at all. What is our school motto, Miss Honey? Bambinatum es magitum. Bambinatum es magitum. Children are maggots. In fact, it must have been her who put that stink bomb into my desk this morning. I'll have her for that. Thanks for suggesting it. Oh, but I did it. <sighs> Miss Trunchbull, Matilda Wormwood is a genius. Nonsense! Headmistress, it is my opinion that this little girl should be placed with the 11-year-olds. We cannot just place her with the 11-year-olds. What society would that be? What about rules, honey? Rules! Uh, well, I believe that Matilda Wormwood is an exception to the rules. An exception? To the rules in my school. Look at the trophy, see how my trophies gleam in the sunlight. See how they shine. What do you think it took to become English? Have a go! Champ! 1969, do you think in that moment when my big moments came that I treated the rules with casual display? No, 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 no! If you want to throw the hammer for your country, you have to stay inside the circle all the time. And if you want to make the team, you don't need happiness or self-esteem. You just need to keep your feet inside the line. Sing, children! Two, three, four! If you want to throw the hammer for your country, you have to stay inside the circle all the time. And if you want to teach success, you don't use sympathy or tenderness.
Life's a ball, so learn to throw it. Find the belly line and tell it, and always keep your feet inside. Now get out! Stupid girl. Well, well I'm, I must tell you, headmistress, that it is my intention to help this little girl, whether you like it or not. Stupid, nasty question asking Russians. Oh, don't tell me we're not rich. Of course not. They, look, they took one look at the mileage and told me that these cars were not good. I told them that it was just a manufacturing mistake. So you lied. Of course I lied. And they didn't believe you. Of course they didn't believe me. I've got green hair. I've got hair. Is that another flaming book? What's wrong with the telly? It seems to be working just fine. No, no. It's a lovely book. Honest. You should read it. I'm sure you... Here's what I think of your... No! That's a library book. You show the little brat. Oh, I'm late for my dance lesson with Rudolfo. Do we have any super... Yeah, it's in the cupboard. And while you're at it, stick that stupid book to your stupid head! <laughs> <laughs> have to grin and bear it if you always take it on the chin and wear it nothing will change even if you're little you can do a lot you must and let the little thing like little stop you if you sit around and let them get on top you might as well be saying you think that it's okay and that's not Oh, there it is. I've got my eye on you, boy. I'm a girl. Do all those brains inside your head ever give you a headache? I mean, it's got to hurt with all of them squash inside there. No, it's fine. I think they just fit. Well, I'd better hang around, just in case this starts squeezing out of your ears. I'm Lavender, and I think it's probably for the best that we become best friends. Ah! Hide me, hide me. Someone put a whole can of treacle on Chunk's chair, and they told her I did it, and now she's asking me. That's not fair. What? I meta trust size you're guilty? You're squashed. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying they're gonna put me in choking. What's choky? They say it's a cupboard in her office that she throws children into. It's lined with nails and spikes and bits of broken glass. There's a place you are sent if you haven't been good. When did this happen? 20 minutes ago, why? She's coming! You better hide! Quick, Please don't tell her I am into the shoe. Now! Where is that maggot known as Nigel? He's over there, under the coats. 
Where he's been for the last hour, actually. What? An hour? Oh yes, Nigel suffered from a very rare but chronic sleeping disorder called narcolepsy. The supper falls asleep without any warning. We put him under the coats for safety, didn't we? Didn't we? Yes! Definitely. He'll probably think he's in bed when he wakes up! Is it time for school yet, Mom? Huh? Oh, hi, Miss Central. Amanda Thrift. Yes, what have I told you about wearing pink tails? I hate pink tails. But my mom said to make them pretty. Well, your mother is a twit. Oh! Yeah! You. What's your name? Matilda. Matilda Wormwood. Well, Wormwood, you just made a very big mistake. <laughs> Just so y'all all know she's my best friend. Wow! Yes, sir. That's right, sir. Totally different car, sir. Oh, uh, green hair? Oh, it's just uh, National Green Hair Day to appreciate everything in the world that's green, like uh, lettuce and uh, grass and uh, snot. Tomorrow at one? Okay, sir. Bye-bye, sir. And that's how it's done. Let me just keep it on. Looks like green. Who is it? Oh, uh, yes. Um, hello, my name is Miss Honey. Matilda's teacher? Bit busy right now. Uh, it will only take a moment. Well, come in, if you must. This is my dance partner, Rudolfo. We're rehearsing. Ciao. Ah, oh, parla italiano. Bene. What? Who is this, babe? You know what interests him due to my energy flow? What do you want, Miss Chutney? Uh, it's, uh, Miss Honey. Well, as you know, Matilda is in the bottom class, and children in the bottom class aren't really expected to read. We'll stop her reading then. Lord knows we've tried. I'm in the zone, doll. I can feel it in my hips. Don't waste this. I'm not a favorite of girls getting on cover pants, Miss Hussy. Looks are more important than books. Now, look at you, look at me. I choose looks, you choose books. Jenny, just get on your feet, Jenny. You are going to march in there and give them a piece of your mind. Leave it alone, Jenny. The more that you try, the more you'll just look like a fool. This is not your problem. You've not got the spine. You are a teacher. Just go back to So the great day arrived. Everything was arranged by the acrobat sister, a frightening woman who used to be an Olympic class hammer thrower and who loved nothing better than to scare the children of the town. Suddenly, 
out came the escapeologists. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the burning woman hurtling through the air with dynamite in her hair over sharks and spiky objects caught by the man locked in the cage has been canceled. No. Canceled because my wife is pregnant. So has a happy ending. No. Oh. Just then, the acrobat sister stepped forward and produced a contract. I have paid for the posters, publicity, and the catering, the toilet facilities. Where is my profit? A contract is a contract. You will perform on this day or off to prison you shall go. No, no. What, what happens next? I don't know yet. Bye, Mrs. Phelps. Tomorrow I shall bring in a selection of very clever books that will challenge your mind. You may sit and read them while I teach the others, and if you have any questions, well, I shall do my best to try and answer them. How does that sound? Matilda! Why, that is the biggest hug in the world. You're going to hug all the air out of me. Matilda Warmer, where is- Yes, Miss Trunchable? Aha, so you admit it, do you? Admit what, Miss Trunchable? This morning, this foul car bubble sneaked in like a serpent into the kitchen and stole a piece of my private chocolate cake for my tea tray. No, I did not. Miss Trunchable, Matilda's been here all morning. Standing up a little spitball, are you? Well, this crime took place this morning before school started, therefore she is. Guilty! <gasps> okay, so look, I stole the Trunchbull's cake, and I was honestly, definitely, sort of, thinking about owning up. Maybe. But I was having a lot of trouble with my tummy. See, the Trunchbull's cake was so good that I had scoffed it down too quick, and now it was beginning to fight back. See? I didn't do anything. You are a crook and you are a thief, and I shall crush you! A huge cloud of chocolatey gas wafted from my mouth and straight into the face of the trench bowl. Bruce Frog Trotter. Yes, Miss Trunchbull? So you liked my cake, didn't you, Bruce? Yes, Miss Trunchbull. I'm really sorry. Oh, as long as you enjoyed it. That's the main thing. Is it? It is, Bob Chaga. Wonderful. Marvelous. That makes me so happy. It gives me a warm glow in my lower intestine. Oh, cook! Lost your appetite? Well, yes, I'm full. I will tell you when you are full. And I say that criminals like you are not full until they've eaten the entire cake. Let no buts eat. And mistress will be sick. He should have thought of that before he decided to steal my cake. Eat. He can't. Eat. He might explode.
uncomfortable. I got carried away. Oh, it's all right, Jenny. We all get carried away sometimes, even me. Well done, Bog Trotter. Good show. Well, come along, Bog Trotter. What? Did I not mention? That's the first part of your punishment. There's more. The second part. <laughs> and the second part is choking. No, Miss Churchill, please, you can't. Did you think I would let myself be defeated by these maggots? Did you? Who do you think I am, Miss Honey? A weakling? An idiot? You? <laughs> That's not right. Matilda, thank God you're here. I've been dying to hear the next part of the story. Mrs. Phelps, where's the revenge section? What? Is there a child at school that's behaving like a bully? Not a child, exactly. Do you want to hear the next part of the story? What are we waiting for? As they prepared themselves for the most dangerous feat that had ever been performed, the acrobat gave her husband a kiss. Smile. We've done this a thousand times. First, I escape from the cage, lean out, catch you with one hand, grab a fire extinguisher with the other, and put out the flames on your specifically designed dress before they reach the dynamite and blow your head off! Ah! Sorry, go on. The trick started well. The moment the dress was set alight, the acrobat swung into the air. She hurtled over the sharps and spiky objects, and suddenly, the padlocks pinged open and the huge chains fell away. The door flung open and the escape all just reached out to catch his wife and the child. I can't look. He grabs her hand, and suddenly the flames are covered in foam before they can both be blown to pieces. Hooray! So it does have a happy ending? No. No? No. Escape all just used just a touch too much foam, and their hands became slippy, and she fell. Did she survive? She broke every bone in her body except the ones at the ends of her little fingers. She lived long enough to have their child. Love our child with all your heart. She's all we ever wanted. And then she died. And then things got worse. Worse? Oh no, Matilda, things can't get worse. I'm afraid they did. Because the escapologist was so kind that he never blamed the evil, st the evil sister for what happened. In fact, he asked her to move in and help look after his daughter. She was nothing but cruel to the little girl, beating her if she ever did anything wrong, but always in secret. So the escapologist never suspected a thing. Let's call the police. No, Mrs. Phelps, <laughs> it's just a story. What? Oh, right, I'd better go. When I grow up, I will be tall enough to reach the branches that I need to reach to climb the trees you get to climb when you're grown up. And when I grow up, I will be smart enough to answer all the questions that you need to know the answers to before you're grown up. When I grow up, I will eat sweets every day On the way to work and I will go to bed late every night And when I wake up, when the sun comes up And I will watch cartoons until my eyes go square And I won't care cause I'll be all grown up
gather around. I want my family to share this time. Ugh, not you, boy. I'm a girl. 155 old bangers on my hands. How could I possibly make the mileage go back? I couldn't well drive each one backwards, could I? Backwards. Exactly. Using my genius mind, I attached the drill to the speedometer and whacked it in reverse. Backwards. And it reduced the mileage to practically nothing. Backwards. Ten minutes later, the Russians showed up. Expensive suits, dark glasses. Russians are nocturnal. I saw it on a program last night. That was a program about badgers. Mm, same thing. And did it work? Fantastico! Now I'll be able to afford Rudolfo all day long. But they trusted you, and you cheated them. What have we done to deserve a child like you? You want to know what I'm going to do tomorrow? I'm going to go down to that school and tell them that you're never to be let back in again. What? No. And if she does, I'll have her fired, young man. I'm a girl. Now go out to bed, you little stinkworm. Backwards. The escapologist's daughter suffered in silence, never saying a single word about the evil aunt's bullying. This only encouraged the woman to greater cruelties, until one day, she exploded. You are a filthy, useless, nasty little creep! And the aunt beat her and threw her into a dank, dark, dusty cellar, locked the door, and went out. Have I been so wrapped up in the grief of my wife that I have forgotten the one thing that mattered to us most? I love you so much. I shall spend the rest of my life making it up to you. But when the little girl fell asleep, the escapologist's thoughts turned to the acrobat's sister. Bullying children is her game, is it? Then let us see what she can do when the wrath of a grown man stands before her. But that was the last the little girl ever saw of her father. What are you doing with those books, woman? The, 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 they're, for they're for Matilda. Not on my watch. There's an age for reading and an age for being a filthy little toad. These are toads, aren't you, Bog Trotter? Yes, miss. Bog Trotter here is not only a toad. Sit. Miss Honey. You believe in fluffiness and kindness in books and stories. That is not teaching. To teach the child, you must break the child. Where's my jug of water? I'll get it, Mitch Trenchful. Stupid girl. Look at you. Flabby, disgusting, revolting, revolting, I say. I think it's time to toughen you all up with a little bit of this egg. This school of late has started reeking. Quiet maggots when I'm speaking. Reeking with the most disturbing scent. Only the finest nostrils smell it. But I know it oh too well. It is the odor of rebellion. It's the bouquet of dissent. The smell of rebellion comes out in the sweat. And this Ed will get you sweating 
And it won't be long before I smell the pong Of aiding and abetting A bit of his head will tell us who has a head full of rebellious thoughts Hold, hold Just like a rotten egg floats to the top of a bucket of water Oh, with a set, the stage of ten, the reek of three, bubet and grotesque, the pump of the fight, the odor of poof, the walk of anarchy and progress. Please, miss, please. Once we've exercised these demons, they shall be too poop for skimming. Some double time discipline should stop the rot from setting in. All right, let's step it up. Double time. One, two, three, four. Discipline, discipline for children who aren't listening to miss. I need a tissue, listen, issue. We can fix it. There's no mystery to mastering the art of group of missing. It's discipline, discipline, discipline. The smell of rebellion, the stench of revolt, the ring of grief. You best in plotting, the whip of resistance, the pump of descent, the pump of war barbarous rotting. Let's bring this out to home. I don't think this is teaching at all. I think it's just cruelty. This is because of you, Miss Honey. Up there! You are weak! You are, in fact, a sliveling little... Newt? Newt! Newt! You. What? No! You are a malicious, vile, repulsive little sinner! Leave her alone, you big fat bully! How dare you? You are not fit to be in this school. You ought to be in a prison, in the deepest, dankest, darkest prison. I shall have you wheeled out, strapped to a trolley with a muzzle over your mouth. I shall. Have you ever wondered? Will I have about how when I say say red, for example, there's no way of knowing if red is the same thing in your head as red means in my head when someone says red. I'm not sure, but I wonder if inside my head I'm not just a bit different from some of my friends. These answers that come into my mind unbidden, these stories delivered to me fully written. And when everyone shouts like they seem to like shouting, this noise in my head is incredibly loud. And I just wish they'd stop my dad and my mom and the telly and stories would stop for just once. And I'm sorry, I'm not quite explaining it right. This noise becomes anger and the anger is light and it's burning inside me with you. Quiet. 
Tip over, come on, tip, tip. And there is nothing that I shall not do. No, no length I shall not go. No punishment I shall not. What is this? What is this? A newt! A newt in my knickers! A newt in my knickers! Oh, oh my God, no! Uh, what? Well, th that was interesting. I think we'd all better go home while we still can. Matilda? Watch. Do you think I'm strange? Would you fancy a nice cup of tea? What do you think it is, the thing with, with my eyes? I can't pretend that I know, Matilda, but I don't believe we should be frightened of it. I think it's something to do with that incredible mind of yours. So you mean everything doesn't fit in my brain so it comes squishing out of my eyes? Well, not exactly, but yes, some, something like that. You certainly are a special girl, Matilda. I met your mother. She's a... unusual. And what about your father? Is he proud to have a daughter as clever as you? Oh yeah, he's always saying, Matilda, I'm so proud to have a daughter as... He's not proud of me, Miss Honey. He says I'm a liar and a cheat and a nasty little creep. I see. I want to show you something. This is where I live. This is my home. Are you poor? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I am. Very. Don't teachers get paid much? Well, they don't, actually. But I am even poor than most because of uh, other reasons. I used to live with my aunt, but then one day I was out walking and I came across this old shed. I fell completely in love with it. I ran to the farm and begged him to let me move in. He thought I was mad, but he agreed and I've lived there ever since. But Miss Honey, you can't live in a shed. I'm not strong like you, Matilda. My father died when I was very young. Magnus was his name and he was very kind. But when he was gone, my aunt became my legal guardian. She was mean and cruel like you could hardly imagine. And then, when I got my job as a teacher, she presented me with a bill for looking after me all those years. And she made a contract for me to pay her back every penny. She even produced a document that said my father had given her his entire house. But do you think he actually gave her his house? I find that hard to believe. Just like I can't believe that he would have killed himself, which is what she said happened. You think she did him in, don't you, Miss Honey? I can't say, Matilda. All I know is that years of being bullied by that woman made me, well, pathetic. I was, I was trapped. Let's go to the police. What? We can't. We have no Who evidence. is she? Matilda, I can't say. Who is she? Matilda, I can't. Who is she? It's, it's, it's Miss. Miss, Miss Trunchable? Y yes.
this class is going to have a very special spelling test. Any child that gets one answer wrong shall go to Toki. What are you looking at? You. You. Spell, oh now, let me see. Spell Newt. Newt, N-E-W-T, Newt. What? Miss Honey taught us. She's very good at teaching. Hmm. You, stand up, turn around, and spell that thing you always are, uh, revolting. Revolting, R-E-V-O-L-T-I-N-G, revolting. You're cheating! I've taught them that's all, with kindness and patience and respect. How dare you bring those words into my classroom, madam? You know nothing of teaching, and I shall prove it. You spell acalychmishini itosis. But that's not a word. You just made that up. Spell it or go to Tokyo. And I have to warn you, it's silent letters. A M C H E L L A. Oh, dear. Deary, deary, dear. I'm so sorry. There was a silent Z in it. You're going to Tokyo. No. Cat. C A S. Cat. You'll have to put me in the Chokey, too. What? Dog. D Y P. And me. Table. X A B A Y. And me. What, what are you doing? What's going on? Stop this! You can't put us all in the Chokey. Banana. G-T-A-A-B-L. Bully. P-Q-R-S-T. Revolting. L-Y-T-T-B. Revolting. You have to put me in the chokey, too. You can't put us on the chokey, miss. Come on, maggots. Did you really think I didn't have to plan all of that? Like, I have chokeys for each and every one of you. Look! What? What's going on? Agatha. Agatha, this is Magus. Give my Jenny back her house. Or I will get you like you got me. Run, 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 run! Never again will she get the best of me. Never again will she take away my freedom. And we won't 
understand they're golfing. We're moving to Spain and we're never coming back. Spain? But why? Because this clip brain sold 155 old bangers to the Russian Mafia. Quick! They're here! Hi! What if they damage my legs? My beautiful legs? Where is your father? He's... I don't know. Sir Roman is a very stupid man. And he assumes I was stupid too. And that is a very rude and stupid thing to do. Yes, I'm afraid my father is quite stupid and very, very rude. You seem smart. Sadly, in my lines of work, I don't have to get to meet smart people like you. So most people I deal with, their thinking is all backwards. Backwards. I can have my friends teach your father some manners. Then, Wednesday, when he leaves hospital, he'll be stupid, but not so rude. What do you say? Um. That offer is very tempting, but I think I've had enough revenge. Your father is very lucky to have you as his daughter. <laughs> Quick! Let's get out of here before they change their minds! Let Matilda stay here with me! I beg your pardon? Mr. Wilmot, I would love to take care of Matilda. I would look after her with love and respect and I'd pay for everything. You mean leave my daughter here with you? Dad, you, you called me your daughter. Do you want to stay? Yes, yes, I do. Well, there's not that much room, so... Sure! Thank you.
I will be tall enough to reach the branches that I need to reach to climb the trees you get to climb when you're grown up. And when I grow up, I will be smart enough to answer all the questions that you need to know the answers to before you're grown up. And when I grow up, I will eat sweets every day on the way to work and I will go to bed late every night. Jenny, just get on your feet, Jenny. You are going to march in there and give them a piece of your mind. Leave it alone, Jenny. The more that you try, the more you'll just look like a fool. This is not your problem. I'm not sure, but I wonder if inside my head I'm not just a bit different from some of my friends. These answers that come into my mind unbidden, these stories delivered to me fully written. And when everyone shouts like they seem to like shouting, this noise in my head is incredibly loud. And I just wish they'd stop my dad and my mom and the telly and stories would stop for just one. Yeah. <laughs> That's too yeah, Miss Trunchy. Miss Trunchy Wunchy. Miss Trunchy Wunchy. Is that what you originally wanted to be, Miss Trunchable? I didn't know who I wanted to be, to be honest. I thought that, like, I didn't know about Matilda. And before this, she told us, oh, we're going to do Matilda. I didn't know about it. But then when after I watched the movie, I was like, I can do her. After I got the part, I think so. I never. Maybe it was set to be. It was meant to be.